because you can't fix a problem at the level it was created. Whatever you believe on the inside is what you manifest on the outside. The voice gets louder. It only becomes stronger the more you practice, the more you listen. We have only one channel that connects to your soul, and that channel is located within your heart. Love yourself, bring compassion to yourself, and understand the fact that you're hearing this today and actually hearing this. We are body, mind, and spirit. So we must, in this plane, take care of the mind at the same time that we're taking care of spirit. That part of you that you don't like is the diamond in the rough. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever wanted to communicate with spirit, get in alignment, and manifest your greatest dreams, then do we have the Vincent Jenna show for you. Today I'll be talking with Vincent Jenna, one of the most entertaining and profound psychics and psychologists on the planet. We'll be talking about connecting with spirit, hearing from spirit, and learning how to manifest with spirit. So welcome to the show, Vincent. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine, but I don't have my shades with me, so don't shine. No, we're going to shine as much as we want. The heck with the shades. <laughs> Thank you for having me on the show today, Michael. It's so exciting to be here. Thank you for being here, a mighty woohoo! And Jessica and I, we've lived near you, and we also lived in Maui for years. And the term for a hole in the storm where the light shines through is a puka. And since I know you're off topsail and there are storms all around, you are a puka in our day. Oh, fabulous. I'm glad to hear that. I have puka beads, but I don't have them on right now. <laughs> so on the puka bead note, what shocks you the most when you connect with spirit? Well, that's really interesting question, Michael, because it's it's not that I'm surprised at all being able to connect with spirit or talking with them. I think what does surprise me is, one, that not everybody else is doing that. I don't think I'm special. Yes, I put a lot of time and energy into researching and perfecting my skills, but I think everybody can do it. But number two, it's actually the condition, the attitude, and the feelings that spirits have on the other side once they leave this plane. They take their personalities with them. And so what they didn't accomplish over here, or maybe some of the things that they did that they didn't like, they still want to fix and rectify and resolve on the other side. And they're so anxious and desperate to connect with us and help us. I think that's the thing that really surprises me the most. So why then, if they're so desperate to connect with us, and I'm guessing it has to do with our high-paced internet, Wi-Fi, this, that, the other, bombarded with information world, why aren't we communicating more with the spirits? Oh, I can tell you why. It has nothing to do with our, what's interfering other than ourselves. You see, we have only one channel mm -hmm. that connects to your soul, to the higher realm, to spirit, to any, to any spirit on the other side. And that channel is located within your heart. Now, here's the problem with that. As long as you have positive beliefs, positive attitudes, positive energy, you are opening that channel up, but you close it down instantaneously the moment you start having negative feelings, negative self feelings, fear, doubt, anguish, stress, that shuts down that channel. So what's happened today, Michael, is though the spirits on the other side, and let me tell you, over the past year, they've been screaming to help us, okay? Mm -hmm. A bullhorn couldn't shout any louder than they are trying to get in our ears, hey, don't do that, you know? And But that negativity we've been experiencing, that stress, that pressure, that drama has shut down that channel. So not only can't we hear them, we can't even hear our own internal guidance. So that's the reason and what's gotten in the way. So how then, and, and thank you so much, Vincent, that's brilliant. How then do we overcome the 
please forgive me, chicken and the egg scenario. When we need to communicate or when we need to actually go quiet and listen the most is what it sounds like is the time that we're least able to hear. The thing that happens has to happen first with the chicken and the egg concept is you must clear the channel, or shall we say clear the closet out. That brain is filled with so much hoarded, unnecessary stuff that you can't hear what you want to hear. You can't even hear yourself speak and think sometimes. People tell me that all the time. They're saying, oh my gosh, there's so much going on in my head. I can't even hear my own thoughts. And that is not uh, an exaggeration or even a metaphor or figurative. That's literal. So if you can't even hear your own thoughts, that means too much is going on in there to start with. And just like you see hoarders on television shows or you go to your closet, you open it up, you go to your drawers, you see all that unnecessary stuff in there. Oh, my gosh, your attic. Forget it. That's what we're loaded down with. You've got to clear that out first. First, then honor what you hear. It sounds like a heavy, not a heavy burden, a high hurdle to overcome. I need help. I need to communicate with spirit. And yet, I must clear out all of my internal closet first. And I can see people shutting down. What's a way to make it simple to be able to get over this? I want to call it subconscious block, and we're going to come back to that in a little bit. Get over this subconscious block so we can start to slow down, drop in, quiet mind. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I wish I can tell you, Michael, that if you just sit there and meditate, you're going to hear your essence. But... People have been meditating for lifetimes, hundreds of years, if not thousands of years. And you know what they're hearing? They're hearing to the level of that block. See, yes. one, there are psychological anomalies that go along. Just being a spiritual being is not enough. We are body, mind, and spirit. So we must, in this plane, take care of the mind at the same time that we're taking care of spirit. Because all the work that we're doing spiritually, all this knowledge that's out there, learning how to meditate or do yoga and release the stress, learning how to tap into the creative forces and manifest your life, all of that is wonderful ancient wisdom. But this ancient wisdom hasn't fixed everything because we got caught up in something else. And we have to fix the psychological anomalies because that's, you said subconscious mind, it goes even deeper than that. I actually wrote a book that's about ready to be published. It's called God, It's Not Working. And I want that, one of your first copies. I oh, want you, one of your I'm first gonna, copies, Vincent. I'm going to hand it to you personally, okay? Personally, Thank I'm going to autograph it, bring it to you. Are you kidding? It labels in there other parts and sections of the human mind that the brain created in order to protect us. You see, the two highest functions of the brain, Michael, is one, keep us alive. We're humans. It has to keep us alive. Number two, how does it do that? By protecting us. All right, that protection part is the most important part for us to understand in order to even be able to clear the channels and tap into the other realm, mm -hmm. because that protection part will create blockages, another set of beliefs to shield you from your original set of beliefs, those maladaptive beliefs you may have picked up when you were a child growing up. I call them the I can't, I'm not, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I can't do this, I can't do that, I'm not deserving, I'm not lovable, whatever that is, you receive those messages from your environment, they're packed away in there. And as you get older and your brain develops, it doesn't like those feelings, so it has to protect you from them. Mm -hmm. Just like your brain will raise the temperature of your body if you catch a bacteria, a virus. Right? The coronavirus isn't causing a fever. 
your brain is causing the fever to put your body in an unlivable environment for the virus. Well, emotionally, mm -hmm. if you're feeling bad about yourself, your brain will create a whole new other set of beliefs, good, bad, or indifferent, to shield you from the original ones. So why should that matter? Why can't we just use the new beliefs, the new spiritual beliefs we develop? Because that's not where we're connected to the power, to source, to spirit, to the law of attraction. Our unconscious mind is connected to that, not our conscious mind. You're going to say something. Well, I know it. Well, I, I want to dive in here. So I, I've got our book coming out in two weeks, Awe, The uh, Automatic Writing Experience. Oh, I love it. So, so we're teaching how to go in this same vein, and, and it takes people step by step. So let's go back to Maui for a minute here. My wife and I are on Maui. We're holding space ah, at a meditation center three, four hours a day, six months in a row. And you know what's going on with our lives, Vincent? Ba Boom. <laughs> it's all crumbling around us because you can't fix a problem at the level it was created. Einstein said that. Yes. And so until we dove in and looked, I call it to uh, hourglass, not hourglass, I call it to snow globe, to look, what the heck is going on in there? What am I seeing? Where are these blocks? Where are they coming from? Until then, anything I do is thwarted by guys with guns at the gates. You're absolutely right. Oh my gosh, I love the way you just put that. That is so, that's exactly the premise of my work because most people don't believe what they think they believe. I get people every day, Michael, that I try to teach how to attract the relationship. Mm -hmm. And I turn around and I tell them one of the reasons why your relationships has failed is because there is a part of you that doesn't believe you're lovable. And they go, no, that's not true. I know I'm lovable. Oh my gosh, I'm 40 years old, I'm 50 years old, I'm 80 years old, I know I'm lovable. And I'm like, if you were, why are you not attracting the most natural thing of life, love and relationships, the two most natural? That's why we're social beings. Our souls came here to experience ourselves and then experience ourselves with each other. So that is natural. It's actually unnatural to not be in a loving relationship. And it's because of that deep stuff that you're talking about that's in there that we got to see first. So let's take this example. Let's say take okay. somebody, because our lives are a reflection in many ways of our blocks. It's our beliefs and our blocks all mixed together. Don't judge yourself. I don't want anybody listening to this to judge no. yourself. Love yourself. Bring compassion to yourself and understand the fact that you're hearing this today and actually hearing this today means it is already changing. But let's take love and relationships. So this person says, I am lovable. And you look at all the, the, the trail of blown up relationships or not workage outages. That's a technical term. How do we help them to be able to, oh, I'm gonna go, go with a good term here, etch a sketch, the wounds and blocks that are in there to clear them out so that they can step forward. So the first thing that they need to do is admit that they've got defensive blocks. That's how you disempower a defense, by acknowledging it. That's all you have to do is say, okay, well, I'm listening to the show right now, and the both of them keep saying the same thing. They're telling me I don't believe in myself, but I don't think I don't believe in myself or love myself. Okay, wait a minute. All right. Well, let's just say I do. Maybe I do have a defense. Boom, that's it. All of a sudden, you've weakened the defense. Mm -hmm. Now, the next step is you go, so what am I believing? And here's the, I hate to say a funny thing, it's the ironic thing about it. The moment you can admit what you're really feeling and believing, yeah. for the most part, most people go, wait a minute, really? I, wait, I don't think I'm good enough. I don't think I'm lovable. That's so silly. Of course. Oh, my gosh. And as soon as they recognize that that belief could be a part of their lives, 
they'll automatically know what to do to get rid of it. But the most important thing they need to do is reparent themselves. They need to re-raise themselves. John Bradshaw mm -hmm. is a, as a counselor actually coined that phrase back in the 70s. He became popular at the same time as Wayne Dyer did uh, with his series called The Homecoming, Reclaiming and Championing Your Inner Child. And he said, you have to have a dialogue a conscious, and I, I talk to little Vinny all the time, oh my God, that kid's got such a big mouth. And, <laughs> and I talk to him daily and because he wants to say, oh, you're not gonna get that, or your book isn't gonna become popular. Nobody wants to buy your book because that's what he was taught to believe about the messages he received because he was tormented as a little kid. Now me as adult Vinny has to say to him, that's not true. So it is a reframing and a positive self-talk as the adult to teach this little kid what is true about him. It's okay, Michael. It's okay, Michael. It's okay. You're going to be all right. I've got your back. You don't right. have to worry. We're going to go and do this together. Little Vinny's trying to keep you small to keep you safe. It's all he's used to. Because for 17 years of his life, he was tormented, he was bullied, he was picked on, he picked up the message that he was no good, he had no value, he wasn't lovable. So, all right, I'm 65 years old now. Of course I've done work. Matter of fact, I've done almost 40 years of self-healing work. I've taken care of the issues. I can talk about it. The hair on the back of my neck doesn't raise at all. You talk about this with some people, then they still are crying about their past because it's affecting them so much in their present. But there are scars. Every injury has a scar. So when I hear little Vinny, and I'm prepared to hear little Vinny just in case, when that little negative voice comes up inside of me, I know it's him and I know what to do now because the scar has been hit, inflamed. Those are also called buttons, you know? And so as a, here's something that's a very off the wall statement that I want everybody to hear, which is 100% true. Every adult, mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. adult, unless they have some mental pathology going on, we'll throw that in, is rational, reasonable, reliable, stable, and mature. Every adult is rational, reasonable, reliable, stable, and mature. Every child is not. So when you see or feel like you're acting up, you see people acting up as adults, it's not their adult that's responding and acting up, it's their child within them. And the proof of that is look at what happened around us just this past year, just this past month. You can immediately look at them and they all look like a bunch of kids having temper tantrums <laughs> totally. on top of each other, holy cow. So then if that happens when you look at the outside world, what do you think is happening on your inside world? The same thing. Thank you. So my wife, Jessica, she's the producer. She just flipped the camera around so I can see myself. And all of a sudden, I had this warm glow and smile, an even bigger smile, because I've been doing the work and giving myself the self-love. In fact, we'll talk about it more. I'm interested to see what spirit has to say. I dove into my automatic writing this morning and was diving into, I had a boo-boo yesterday. And so I was asking uh, uh, my guides what happened. However, I'm going to use an interesting term. You said every injury has a scar. And I would say, it's sort of like Rumi says, the wound is where the light shines through. Every scar can be used for greatness. When the scar comes up, it is the most beautiful opportunity, I'm ready to cry here, to send yourself more love than you were ever sent as a child, than you were ever sent by your parents. 100% yes. And maybe I believe 
that, and I don't think it's necessary, but I believe that souls, because we're evolving, have intentionally set that up in order for us to give self-attention, but in a positive way, by giving that love. Now, that's gotten real out of hand. <laughs> and yes, great growth can come from all the scars and all the pain and all the suffering. As a matter of fact, I'm tired of it even being a thought or a religion <laughs> because there's way too much suffering now. Great suffering also pulls you away from spirit. It doesn't pull you closer, you know? Uh, a, a common story that I tell is I can just see when Master Jesus was about ready to come down and he's having a conversation with Dad, Yeah, you know, and he's telling Dad what his plan is. And Dad is going, what are you, Meshuggah? <laughs> You're going to go down there and do what? You want you, you want them to put you on a cross and crucify? Forget it. You're one of my best kids here. You've grown up. I'm going to lose you. Don't do that. You're a nut. What, do you, what, for them? They'll get it. Just leave them alone. No, Dad, I got to go down. I got to give them an example. Show them that they can do it. Show them who they are. Oh, God, I'm going to pray for you. But who do I pray to? You know, it's just like I can just see because hurting does pull us apart. But you're right. It gives us the opportunity, but the secret ingredient, Michael, mm -hmm. is taking that opportunity and not progressing the pain. Thank you. It's it's. Uh, I had a past life regression years ago because I accounted, and and it's 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 interesting. I accounted thirty six substantial injuries and hospitalizations, and so I had a a a, a past life regression session. Uh, with somebody trained by uh, Dolores Cannon herself and, and said that I, I, I was around and I, I saw this vision of me around a council of elders going, give me the works. And they're like, no, 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 no. You don't understand. And I'm like, give me the works. I can take it. I'm not sure that's self-love. No, it's not. But think about what, what we're doing it and why we're doing it. It's taken us, and I got to tell you, the earthly plane is the last of the beings of evolvement. We're the slowest. Sorry, people. That's not a judgment. <laughs> what do you think our extraterrestrial brothers are coming down to help us for? Because it's taken us forever. And the problem is we have two concepts in mind, if you think about them, that we go through here because we go through on the other side. It's restitution and retribution. Wow. Restitution is the idea that, you know what, if I make a lower choice, and I know I, that's, that's a bad idea, I'm not gonna do that again, that hurt too many people, it hurt me, forget it, I'm not gonna do that again. That's restitution, you've done, all done, great, you've grown, but we're not there. We have a retributive attitude. Oh, well, if I've gone, I, you know, you did something wrong, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, you deserve to be punished. But we have that attitude about ourselves. Yeah. And I'll, I'll show, give you a living example of it. But we'll sit there and we'll go, oh, man, what a horrible thing I did. I mean, I got drunk. I got in a car. I got into an accident. I hurt a whole bunch of people. I got to go down there and I got to fix that. Uh, okay, wh what can we do that you can make it up? Now, you got to hurt me because that's the only way I'm going to feel better. That's retribution. Mm -hmm. We can see examples of that here on Earth. It happens with guys more than it happens with women, unfortunately. Think of some buddies horsing around or playing football, right? And they're oh, yeah, they're on top of each other, right? And one accidentally eyes, elbows the guy in the eye, his friend. And it's, oh, my God, my eye, right? And, and what? He feels so bad. Oh, my God, I feel so bad. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay, punch me. Go ahead, punch me. That's okay. I'll feel better if you punch me and hurt me back. What an attitude to have. It goes back. So my child, your, your childhood, uh, we may have been a punching bag a time or two. May have happened. Oh. I'll only speak for myself, but may oh, yeah, have I'm happened. Not. And then I took ownership of that, and I felt that if I punched myself first, I might be safe. This is on a subconscious level. If I Ow. attack myself first, I am safe, which gets to this concept of karma 
and past lives and us feeling, well, clearly, I must have been a bad person if this keeps happening to me. Karma is not a law. It's a principle. And we have the choice of using it or not. But it doesn't happen automatically without our free will choosing it. We got to understand that. Thank you. So just because we do something bad, it's not a guarantee that something bad is going to happen to us or needs to happen to us. But that is an attitude that we take on. Because here's where it starts, Michael. And I don't mean to say that, well, you were young at the time, but we carry it as adults. Children, when they first come into the world, are very egocentric. They think the entire world revolves around them because they don't have a developed mind. So because of that concept, yeah. they also think they're the cause of everything. So anything good that happens, anything bad that happens, yeah. they take the blame and the responsibility. So now you've got a soul that just entered the earth. The soul knows that it's lovable. It just came from a loving place and it's now here, but it's receiving a different message. It's being mistreated or maybe it's not getting attention at all, that soul in the child. And mommy's not there, daddy's not there, or they are and they're abusive or they're yelling at each other. And something feels bad. It feels off because it's conflicting with that soul's concept of love. Well, like I said, the brain must protect us. Well, one of the other ways it protects us is by making an answer for a conflict. This doesn't feel right. What's wrong? It's undeveloped. So the only answer it can get and give is it must be me. Yeah. I'm not lovable. I'm bad. I'm being picked on because there is something wrong with me. Maybe I am unloved. And then what winds up happening, you inevitably will receive some outside message to reinforce that. In my case, and I'm not going to speak for you, mm -hmm. one day at 13 years old, I was so hurt and frustrated because I had just ran two miles. And yes, it was two miles to school. And it was uphill both ways. <laughs> was it through the snow barefoot? Because if so, you got my childhood, Vincent. No, I had shoes on, but it was through snow because I lived in New York, okay? But they were chasing me. A bunch of kids and younger kids than me were chasing me because they wanted to beat me up. I ran in the house. My mother was home. I was crying, and I asked her, why? Why is this happening oh, no. to me? And she turned no, no, around no, 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 no. in the only loving way she could and said, maybe you are arrogant, and that's why they want to beat you up. And I'm 13 years old, and that sounds older, but that's a baby. My grandson is 13 years old. There's no way I would give him credit for making wise choices. And yet, this is the what I felt about myself. So it was so, you know, exacerbated the feeling. And we get those messages all the time. It's not our fault. It's not everybody's fault for not loving themselves because of the messages. That's been passed down from century to century to century. And you can tell my formula and my work that is in my book, to the degree that a person lashes out in life yeah. is the degree that he or she despises him or herself. So true. Wow, wow, wow. So we share the same childhood. I was called track star at the beginning of high school because I ran home with a whole pack chasing me with the heavy backpack and made it in the door just in time. Wow. And, and I can remember going to Hebrew school. It was interesting. I had the confused childhood. I went to Hebrew school and Catholic school. So it was, it was, it was a good childhood. Um, and, and I remember... I <laughs> I remember <laughs> running for the carpool, the car to get in to go to Hebrew school. I think it was in junior high, and the bullies caught me and beat the snot out of me right in front of the car. And I got in, and both the mom who had watched it happen and then my mom told me it must have been your fault. And we take ownership of it, Vincent. We have no idea. Our minds, what you're saying is our minds at that age have no idea how to separate from that and get an honest opinion. 
That's right. And we wonder then why we have such a hard time believing in and connecting in with spirit, with the other realm. We don't even believe that there is God to start with. You know, so when you ask me, it's like, how are we going to connect with spirit and clear that? You got to clear it all out, but you also have to change your beliefs. You have to believe in something other than this physical world because there is more than us just being beat up. There is more than just that suffering and that hurt and that pain. There is the soul and there is the growth that we can make from it because we do, and I hate this phrase because I'm sick and tired of it, mm -hmm. We do make lemonade out of lemons, and I'm sick and tired of lemonade. I want some iced tea. <laughs> okay. So stop throwing me lemons. But here's the problem with that. Whatever you believe on the inside is what you manifest on the outside. Yeah. So if you don't believe you're lovable, of course you're not going to manifest a partner. But if you also believe that you're not good enough, you're going to manifest lack of opportunities or lost opportunities. You're going to lose that promotion or you're going to have financial difficulties. And if you keep thinking that you deserve to be punished, you're no good. You're going to have health problems. You're going to have you're going to you manifest whether you know it or not 24 seven. And you usually manifest what you don't want rather than what you do want I, because of all of that. I, I have a book on sorcery, I call it, coming out, about how we use spells and anti-spells. A spell is saying, here's what I want and I know I can get it. An anti-spell is, I don't deserve it. And that, you know, unfortunately, that anti-spell follows. That's what I worked most of my 40 years of doing this work on is stopping my anti-spells from Little Vinny. That's where it takes the adult. So here's the wonderful thing about your show and all shows like this and the books and the wisdom that's out there. Train the adult. Retrain the adult's mind. Let that adult mind feed into all this wonderful truth and you're retraining the subconscious mind, but you're also bringing a fuel and tools to be able to retrain the little you. Because we are an accumulation. And please, please, any book that tells you to get rid of your past, get rid of the book instead. It's Thank easier. You. OK, hey, you wear an accumulation. Actually, it's easier to amputate your right arm or your left arm than it is to get rid of your past. Yeah. Nor should you. Why would you want to get rid of any part of your life, even the part you don't like? You know what? That part you don't like is the foreword of your book, your novel, the story you're writing. That's where it begins. But then the rest of the chapters that can be wonderful are now up to you to write. I'm going to say that part of you that you don't like is the diamond in the rough. You do the work, as you're saying, to retrain the adult, and you're going to go, wow, this thing is actually an amazing jewel, and I've had it all along. You have had it all along, and don't be afraid to keep looking back. You know, one of the things I love about social media are all the memes you get posted out there. They give me such fuel for workshops and more information and lectures that I can do. And one of them is don't look behind you because you're walking forward, you're journeying forward instead. And I'm like, holy cow, if you just keep looking forward, you're seeing where you're not. OK, you're seeing all the way down the road there. You've got to turn around every so often to remind you how far you've gotten and where you are now. People want to think, oh, I take one step forward, 10 steps back. By that philosophy, we'd all be back in our mother's wombs. <laughs> We're not, OK, because we have stepped forward more. It may feel like giant steps backwards, but if you turn around and you see, well, you know, all right, maybe my life isn't exactly perfect right now, but at least it's not that anymore. I've grown. I have changed. And you even have more information to tell the little you. You've grown. Look at where you are today. And Michael, you. Oh, my gosh. All you have to do is tell that little Michael, little Michael, first of all, I want to love you and thank you so much.
because who you are, no matter what pains you went through, got me to hear. You and I, you started it, and I, you let me help you, but you got me here, and I love you for that. And that's the truth about little Michael and little Vinny, because if they didn't go through that and make the choices, I don't want the bad guy to feel bad about some of the lower choices they've made. However, think about this for a moment. In all the hurt that you've gone through, I'm sure you never once thought of picking up a gun and going into a school and shooting up a whole bunch of kids because of that. Because there was something inside of you that you chose to allow to control you, a positive side. We have that choice every day. We have the Cain and Abel side in us all. And we can choose to be either and kill off the good part of us and our brothers and sisters or love and have compassion for them. And I'm glad you and I did the same thing. And everybody can, everybody can, if they just take the time to realize that they still are divine beings and they have a divine essence and soul and connection. Right? I mean, I know. And that doesn't mean we haven't been angry. That doesn't mean we haven't been, you know, pissed off and, oh, Gosh, I, I want to get in. Yo, hey, in my in in my Christian background, right? I always bring up the fact that Jesus went into the temple and he threw the tables all over the place, and the marketers he got really pissed off. Man, I love that. I love that about him, that he got pissed off like that. You know, so even the greatest of our representatives spiritually felt that way. That doesn't make us bad. That make us makes us normal. The choices we make after that are what matters. How do we start to connect with spirit if we've been doing the work? All right. Now you've done the work. You've opened the door. You've cleared out the closet. You were doing some physical practices. You put yourself in a great frame of mind. So you take a moment, breathe. One of the reasons why you'll hear the majority of meditation start with breathing properly, because believe it or not, we don't breathe properly. The most important thing, we can live without food for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. We can't live without oxygen for more than three minutes before there's damage. But we breathe shallow. We don't breathe deep enough. We don't take it in. We breathe too fast. You take a moment to fill your body with that oxygen. And you quiet your mind of all the thinking throughout the day. Those are just some techniques, but what you're doing is you're opening the channel to that connection, right? You're dialing the number, right? And you want a clear connection, so you gotta clear the mind. And you're all ready, and let's say you're ready. Now, ask a question. Have an intention. I totally believe in Eastern world philosophy. They've been practicing meditation way many years before we have here in the West. However, since they have been practicing it, yeah. you would think they would be more evolved than they are. They are not. They just meditate better than we do, but they still live in pain and suffering because they're missing something about their meditation. They meditate without intention. Yeah. Only with the idea that I'm going to connect to my soul. And so they'll sit there and they start breathing to experience their soul. Well, wait a minute. I like Edgar Cayce's material on meditation. Mm -hmm. He said, always meditate with an intention because you're raising your energy and the intention now directs the energy. You got to direct it somewhere. Maybe it's in a prayer for somebody. I want to think about somebody. You're raising the energy and you're sending your positive energy to that person. Maybe you do have a question 
something you don't know at all, or a choice you need to make and you want some better guidance. Ask the right question. Turning around and asking spirit, what do you have to tell me, is not the right question. Because then spirit can tell you anything. Mm -hmm. well, okay, did you know how many calories are in an Oreo cookie? Spirit can give you any answer, but it wants you to ask the right question. What do you want? What do you want, my friend? If we were children going up to our parents, we wouldn't turn around and say, so what do you have to tell me today, mommy? Do you what do you want me to do today? Do you remember the movie Moneyball? Brad Pitt. Oh, yes. Baseball movie. They've been stripped. They had uh, they went up against the Yankees, the Oakland A's. They got stripped of all their star players. They have no budget. And here come all of the, uh, the people who are trying to, they're the recruiters, trying to get a new team. And Brad Pitt, who's the manager of the team, like, this is not going to work. We don't have a budget. We're not asking the right questions. I, that's <laughs> that's it. And so many people's prayers go unanswered, not because they're not heard. We're connected to source 24-7. It's because they're undirected or they're asking the wrong thing. You know, uh, if, if, if we ask God, um, help me here, help me fix this, the response is going to be, I did. I gave you the ability to fix it. What more do you want me to do? I can keep reminding you you're capable of fixing it. I can stand by your side like your buddy and rah-rah you on so that you can fix it, but I already gave it to you, you know? So go, go fix it. So it has to be a better question. That's the first phase. Ask the right question of spirit, whether it be source, whether it be your ascendant masters, whether it be deceased loved ones. Ask the right question. What you really want to know and then say to yourself well what do i really really want to know actually what do i really 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 want to know okay because there's an underlying question to every question you wind up coming up with to start with okay like well why do you want to know that well it's because of this well why do you want to know that it's because of this Ah, so now we're getting to the source of what you really want to know. So come up with the right question. Sometimes it's simple. Okay, Spirit, I've just been offered two jobs. Mm -hmm. They both mm -hmm. sound real good, but which one of them is actually in my best and highest interest? Now, the reason why we want to ask a question like that is because in our human state, we sometimes get confused. Well, a lot of times we get confused with knowing what it is our soul really, truly wants for us. Yeah. It's, it's like, you know, if we went to Toys R Us with, with our parents, right, and our parents said you can get any toy you want, and we take off without asking which one would be the best toy? Oh my gosh, we'd go through tons of them and then we'd pick them up, we'd drop and go, oh no, I don't want this. Oh, I'd want that over there. Oh, maybe I want what Billy has. He looks like he's having fun and we go run over there. All we have to do is say, hey dad, mom, you've been getting me toys for a while now. You know what I like best. Which one do you think I'd have more fun with? That's what you're asking is which one do you think I'd enjoy the most? And if you don't think I'd enjoy that toy that I'm asking for, then show me which one I'd really enjoy. I've been doing that all along about my book being published, about a television show that I want to be able to do. And I'm not seeing what I thought I wanted. I then I ask the right question. The phrase that I use, what I teach in the book, what I teach to everybody, it goes exactly what you say. I ask for our highest good and the highest good of all or something better. Better. Open up the hands. Allow God, source, universe to put it here. And, and did you ever see the movie Oh God with George Burns oh and John Oh God, that was, that was Las Vegas. Loved it. Loved it. Well, 
there was one question. There is a part where um, their counsel is getting together and he's being sued for defamation or something like that, John Denver. And so they want to see if he's really talking with God. So the counsel of these ministers send him home with these questions. And one of the questions is, what do you want for mankind? And God turns around and says, I want nothing more and nothing less than what you want and will what make you happy. So source knows what we want. So when we think we're here to serve its purpose, we're not. We're here to serve our purpose, but we ask spirit to help us because we do get confounded with our own human thoughts mixed in with everybody else's thoughts. Now, that's part one, ask the right question. Yeah. You said part two much earlier in this discussion, and it has to be and is one of the most difficult parts that we have as humans to start with. Mm -hmm. Listening. Listen. You have to listen, not just hear the noise, Listen, listen to the response, listen to the voice. We can't even listen to each other. We're immediately thinking about one thing before the person even finishes saying what they want to say. We're in la-la land while we're having a conversation with somebody. You have to listen to your inner voice and honor it. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote an entire essay just based on that. It was, it was um, self-reliance. Mm -hmm. And in it, he writes about how important it is to listen to your inner voice and honor it, right, wrong, or indifferent, because it only becomes stronger the more you listen to it. And if it does make a mistake because you get it confused with your emotional voice, well, at least if you fall or trip, you're falling and tripping on your own words rather than somebody else's words and advice. But it does get stronger. That I want. I, I, I want. Well, you did just repeat it. That to me, what he said, Ralph Waldo Emerson. That point cannot be overstated. The voice gets louder. It only becomes stronger the more you practice. The more you listen. That's right. Well, think about us. Let's say you have somebody that you have a conversation with that you know, somebody at work, whatever, and they may ask you for advice and you start talking and then all of a sudden they're off on some other tangent and you know they're not listening. Well, how often would you continue to have a conversation with that person when you know they're never listening to you? You'd stop. So the voice actually gets lower and lower and lower and can even stop talking because you've not listened to it at all. Or shall I say, you're actually building such a wall between your consciousness and that inner voice that you can't hear it anymore, that you can't hear it. It's gone. That proverbial wall that humans think that we build between us and the world no such a thing. You can't do that. It's impossible. You're connected to everything. Therefore, you can't build a wall. Not even Donald Trump could build a wall, okay? So we can't build a wall. But where you do build a wall is between your left brain and your right brain. Mm -hmm. Your right brain contains your emotions, your nurturing, your intuition, your creative side, the emotional side, important. The left brain is the rational thinking, logical side that takes the risks. Because we don't want to deal with our emotions, we don't want to listen to them because they hurt too much, we build that wall between ourselves. Well, that's where your inner voice is, and you've got to break down that wall. Even if you put a crack in it by the work I said we do earlier, we did earlier, right? Now you put a crack in it, that crack gets larger the more you're listening for that voice. And your vision, it's not just an inner voice. Your brain has an inner ear and an inner eye. It only thinks in sound and vision. Mm -hmm. It doesn't spell out a word for you when you're thinking of something like a bed. 
You don't think see B E D. You see the picture. You see a vision. That's your mind's eye, your third eye, whatever you want to call it. That can become as strong as you allow it by giving it attention. And so can that inner ear. That inner ear is when you're talking to yourself or when you're thinking about something, you hear it, yeah. right? When people say they're thinking, you're actually hearing yourself. Yeah. It's not a typewriter going, even though it goes that fast. You're hearing. Well, that same voice speaks to you. Now, don't be surprised if spirit sounds like you. A matter of fact, it should. And it, okay? It's not going to be some... Vincent? Okay? Are you going to listen to this now? This is God speaking. No, it's not going to sound like that. It doesn't even sound like Stephen Colbert's God when he's doing that routine. It's your voice. It has to be. Because that's how you get to honor yourself and your connection and who you are. So listen. And whatever comes to you, as a psychic and a medium, I have to honor whatever comes to me. It could be wrong. It doesn't matter. It's mostly right now because of how much I have trusted it. Thank you. So on that note, I have specific questions, but I want to see if you're guided, if you feel called, if there's somebody here, if there's anything that you want to share. And then if not, then I have a question or two and I will have good questions. No problem. You let me know when you're ready. I am ready. Okay, great. So the word opportunities kept coming up for me with you mm -hmm. because that in this phase of your life, you've done a lot of work. We'll get to that momentarily because they want to remind you of some of the things you've got to keep reminding yourself of. But right now, the highest energy in your life right now is opportunities that are coming your way. Now, obviously, you did talk about a producer that's coming in. That is part of the opportunity. 2021, especially for you, which I've been finding out too for me, is fulfillment. The word is fulfillment. You will be fulfilling big dreams. Now, you're getting cautions at the same time. Okay, the cautions are know that you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Know that you know what you're doing. You and I both know that people are starving to death for knowledge and wisdom on how to change their life. They are literally starving to death. Yeah. And that's why we're so necessary. So I keep getting the number three. I don't know exactly what you've been presented with recently, but they're telling you three different opportunities are coming to you yeah. on three different levels, okay? So now would be a time to meditate. Each one of them can be completely successful for you, but they look three different ways. And it's okay. You want to use and go for the way you're going to enjoy the most and most importantly has the least amount of pressure on you and demands two of the opportunities have greater demands on you the third opportunity it seems that somebody else is going to do most of the work so you want the one that's not going to be as time consuming um because you've got so many other things to do so there has to be live stuff not just your show, in person. Mm -hmm. This will start, the restrictions will start dying down within this year sometime. Not in the early parts of it, but definitely next year. And you have to take the opportunity, especially next year, to be in person. There's one thing about seeing you on camera and there's another thing about seeing you in person. Yes, your energy can come through. It will. It does. You don't have to worry about that. You're a great presentation. You're fun. What you see in me is what you have in you. Um, and more so. But live. Live, you create incredible events. And so you must consider still being able to do that. Yeah. 
okay? And keeping live events coming up. And again, that seems to be more in 2022 than anything else. And a lot of traveling. Keep yourself untied down mm -hmm. so that the times you are free, you can do your traveling. Around you, that energy has to come into play. So we're talking about like with your wife, with 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 partnership, with friends that are going to be helping you out. I feel that balancing in and working with you, those that will be working with you, you will attract more into your life that will balance into your schedule. And those that cannot will kind of just be on the sidelines a bit. So in other words, there may be some people you think about taking with you in this journey. No that you might not be able to. There may be others instead because it doesn't fit well with everybody else. You again have to know you're the pilot, okay? Spirit is the wind beneath your wings and the force and the energy, we know that, but it wants you to know you're the pilot. So you have to make the decisions and you certainly can talk to spirit all along the way as you are now, but you have to trust your decisions and not be afraid of them. Um, but you're the one they're going to turn to. They're not going to sit down and meditate the same way yeah. and send the contract over to spirit. They're going to be sending you the contract, okay? Um, so, and you're going to pick up the pen. And yes, you do automatic writing, but you're still holding the pen. So true. Okay. All right, it's just like, you know, um, Esther Hicks, now this is spirit speaking directly to you. Esther Hicks became popular, not because of what she thought was her word, it's what the public thought was Abraham's word. And that was the wrong success. And that is the wrong information. Because not everybody in the world is going to walk around and start channeling their higher self. They need to connect to their higher self and get that same information as them. As them. But it was a hook. It was different. Edgar Casey did the same thing. Seth did the same thing. Jane Roberts. And, and all of them did the same thing. But it is them that is speaking. It is you and you, all of you that is writing. Don't go beyond you mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. here you are trying to teach people that they've got the connection so you don't want to use a different connection in order to teach them that. You want to use you and you want to teach them how they can make similar connections with themselves, okay? That they're the ones that are doing this. They dislike themselves. Mm -hmm. They don't want an outside force coming in to like and give credit to. That's like giving credit to all the medication that is fixing everybody's mental life. But it is you and your journey that brought you back. Never forget that. And never forget that that's what you're teaching. And it wasn't spirit alone because I'm connected to everybody. Not everybody uses me. You used me. Take credit for that because that's what you're teaching the most. You're teaching people to use their greatest tools not to become someone different. I don't want them to be anybody different. I want them to be who they are. That's the beautiful part. That's what I made so beautifully is you already. Um, we have a great relationship. I want you to trust that. Big things for you, big plans. Be ready. You've been waiting for a while now. You've got already great success, great connections. Now we need you more and in a higher plane for you. Um, and, and, um, and your wife is adding a lot to what you'll be doing and what she is doing. The two of you both have great... I need to put you in the public's eye. And whatever way you do that down on the earth is the way that we need to get it done. So you want TV show? Let's do TV show. You want public appearance? Let's do public appearance. Um, but I will tell you this. One day, you and Vincent need to be in an arena and have 80,000 present 
because then you'll raise the roof. Easy. As we should be. Because that's what you do together when you're together. Yes, you do good work via the electronic world, and that's better than nothing, but you do better work when you're together. Your world got too big, and it separates you too much. And it's really interesting. Your eyeglasses keep popping out to me, but not because of the look, because of the vision in them. Um, I'm feeling they need an adjustment, the lenses. Um, have you been getting either any strain or headaches or, or blood vision or tiredness of the eyes at all? Um, because for some reason, I don't know if it's because of the computer distance or what you're looking at, they, they need some kind of adjustment. What's been going on with your eyes lately? Well, uh, thankfully, the eyes have been getting a lot stronger since we moved out here by Joshua Tree, but the prescriptions are absolutely totally way off. Okay, gotcha. All right. So because they're way off and the eyes are getting stronger, they're actually causing a strain because your eyes are looking through them, having to refocus in a different way. Absolutely get them done. Okay? Thank Absolutely you. get them done. You are not needing to go back. Have you read the passage of the Joshua tree? No, I in have the not. You need to. You were brought there for a reason. It was named after the biblical Joshua tree for a reason. And so you need to understand and go back to it. And it's really funny that um, that has happened because that came up in my wife's life. All of a sudden, out of the clear blue, she was having these ideas of the Joshua tree, Joshua, and, and, and the Joshua tree. So you need to go and read that to get a, a, an understanding of your link. Don't, it's funny, you connect with spirit, mm -hmm. but you don't necessarily connect with Judaism the same way. That's true. But it actually, with Judaism, the foundation, just some of it misinterpreted, mm -hmm. obviously, mm -hmm. it all is. Just like you don't want to get rid of, we don't want to get rid of Christianity either, but it was misinterpreted. Jesus was not the Savior, and he was not the only Son of God. We all were. But he was a Jew, with a, and he was a great rabbi with a great message. And we don't want to misplace that just because humankind did it wrong and did it harm in some way. Um, so you're needing to reconnect and link. And Spirit wants you to get a little old-fashioned. Interesting. Yeah, which I find really, I think that it, it uh, wants you grounded yeah. uh, is what I'm getting, a grounding. And why you chose to come into this world as as a human right now versus being in spirit guiding people, right? So there needs to be a grounding um, because our world can take us to woo land. And I recognize that every so often. So moving back, there is a longing. I'm definitely feeling a longing. Um, when are you planning to go back home? We, um, <laughs> it's the brilliant question. It is one of my three questions which is we want to move come April. We don't know how we got here. It was spirit divinated. We never, ever expected to be here, ever. And yet it's the most perfect place for now. But we call ourselves mountain ocean people. And this is desert. And it is beautiful, sacred desert. And it is an amazing place from which to grow. But we are feeling a huge pull to the mountains. And we are also feeling a strong pull to water. And we don't know head still gets, in, in, and what I hear out of automatic writing is it'll become clear now about 85, 88 days. They were saying a couple weeks ago, it'll come clear within the next 100 days of where you get to go. But this is the question that is certainly on our hearts right now. Sooner than later is what I'm getting. It's definitely within this year. Plan on it, think about it. Um, you were brought to the perfect place um, because it, for twofold reason, you needed to be here in order to get out differently to the universe mm -hmm. and to people. It brought you out in a different way. It made you feel different. Um, it is to bring you to roots. 
We needed to clear out that what is the desert? The desert is mostly barren. We needed you to get rid of everything that you thought is what balanced you mm -hmm. because it is not this planet that balances you. It is you that balances the planet. You empower the water. You empower the mountains. The mountains and the water do not empower you. Too many people are getting rooted in the land rather than in their pots mm -hmm. that they can carry with them wherever they go. So it's a matter of clearing out, making barren mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. you thought which was important to really discover what was important. You are. And you made value here just the same way as you made value there. Now, now, yes, you're missing it because you tend to like external things to stimulate you. Mm -hmm. um, rather than, again, you balancing the stimulation. Um, right. One of the reasons why um, you stay... Meat and food is external. Yeah. Okay. And so, again, you're putting the emphasis on the e external and what you do with it in order to feed the internal, rather than knowing that whatever you use to feed the internal can work is if you empower it right. If you have the right attitude yeah. about it yourself, it doesn't make a difference what the world does with something. It makes a difference with what you do with something. It's why, why some tribes were able to live off of certain plants and elements that others cannot. Yeah. Um, so, so empower everything around you rather than having it empower you. And you needed to know that more and experience that more. Plus, you and your wife needed to get closer yeah. and deeper by re being removed from external stimulation. Um, I hope you, you recognize the depth of where you went during this time. Yeah. It's been a very interesting, certainly, inner journey, massive, beautiful shifts not easy, uh, but massive no shifts shift during this time. Yeah, exactly. Um, we don't make, you don't make them easy. Nothing is easy down there anymore. That's not, why do you think you lost the Garden of Eden? That's what it was all about. The Garden of Eden, everything was easy. The moment you thought and separated from me and thought that there was something else, you made everything difficult. And so everything becomes difficult now. So just expect that. Um, that's your human existence, and you've you've come. And the more spiritual you become, the more thankful you are for your difficulties, um, which I think is funny. Is the more spiritual you become, the more difficulties you should be getting rid of. You should be going back to easiness yes. uh, and ease and peace and harmony rather than complication. Um, so so think about that, and when you're teaching somebody something. You tend to like to go there anyway. You want things to be easy, um, but you got to get the hard stuff out of the way first. Thank you. And everybody's hard stuff is still interfering with them. That's what you talked about earlier. So do it within yourself. Um, April. Okay, so April changes are coming and plans are being made. That's right around the corner. So that's um, actually less than 100 days. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that could be, the, but not the actual move. Maybe that, what you were getting the 100th day is the physical part of going back home. But April um, seems to be the plan, the arrangements, um, seeing everything really coming clear. This is really good. Um, it's not going to make a difference where you set your base. You'll be traveling from there. It's just a, it's just your your energy um, booster. I just consider... Spirit likes to really play with different images these days. He, he says it's like one of your... 
uh, Teslas that needs to be plugged in for new energy. Unlike his, he likes the Tesla, by the way. I've, I've got I've got my pet who we're going to bring on in a few minutes. He yes, he takes do. he takes his naps in the Tesla. We have one of the maybe the only bright yellow Tesla with gold wheels on the planet. Are you kidding me? So that's the reason why he not. just put that image in my head is because it's your Tesla. It's our Tesla. <laughs> So that's what he's using as an example. He says it's like plugging it in. You need to pu plug in your Tesla, your body, um, into some energy so that you can go traveling, okay? So just remember that that's why you're going home and the only reason why you're going home. How do we define home? Where is home? Is home with family? Is home mean back to the mountains? Because they live different places. Family is East Coast, New Jersey to, to no, Boston oh God, areas. No. no, oh God, no, no. Your family is in your heart. It's not your next door neighbors, nor should they be. Um, you, yeah, you're at a point in your life that you need to carry the love of your family or what they're capable of giving as love mm -hmm. with you wherever you go. Yeah. There will be a time you will be going home to help your mother. Okay. Yeah. Um, at some time, but not yet. Do not feel that as a responsibility. And you can always travel to visit them, but don't feel so disconnected. You have to create your home where you want to be. And that is in the mountains. That is not in New Jersey. And he says, and I wish everybody moved out of New Jersey and New York. They'd be a lot happier. <laughs> I know you didn't see this one coming. Oh, um, gosh. Woo woo Ruru. is beautiful. Yeah. So I'm going to put your feet here. I know, I know you just took a big nap, so you're all energized. But let's see if you can say hi. Hey, woo -woo. Hi, woo woo. Oh, oh, oh. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Breathe, breathe, breathe with me. There you go. There you go. There you wow. go. Breathe. Oh, that woo woo breathe. loves that. And does Woo Woo have a love life uh, at all? Not, not the one that he would like right now. He has uh, his his uh, flock as two stuffed animals, Henrietta and Susie Q, until we get uh, uh, to a more grounded place where he can have his own little flock. Very funny. That is the number one thing that I'm hearing from Woo Woo right now yeah. that he's missing. It feels it's and it's not like obviously like you or I that he's horny. Um, it's it's a it, it's a it's a need. It's a balance. Um, and it, it, yeah, so he's missing that. He's mm -hmm. missing that need. Um, I need my girls. Also, um, you don't always let me eat as much as I want. Weird. Is there some, is there a certain amount that you feed him at times or a limitation to what you're feeding if him at times? If he has too many worms, dried worms, he gets diarrhea. That's his, his favorite thing is dried worms. And um, actually, that's really his favorite thing. And oh, I guess there's a seed that's not, whoa, oh, it's okay. That's not as good as some of the others where we could give him more of that seed. He would like more of that. Oh, good boy. Okay. I'm feeling that too. I'm feeling that too. I'd like to, I want to eat more. Um, um, so that, so, so those seem to be two things that are standing out. I want to go home. Um, I want to go home. So uh, obviously he was with you. Back in the mountains as well. With okay, I want to go home. I don't like it here. Um, it's also too hot. Is where he's he's feeling some different. The dryness of the heat is dry. Is there any way that you get him humidity? Uh, what I've been started all? doing is filling the bathtub up and leaving it full throughout the day to get more more humidity in the house. We could just get a humidifier though. Oh, okay.
Okay. I think a little bit humidifier is going to be a little bit and, and better. He definitely um, was there still he definitely dryness. doesn't like the dirt because the dirt is just sand, literally sand here, and he likes digging in dirt. There is no dirt. Absolutely. Then that with that it yeah. needs moisture. Um, yeah, and I'm I'm feeling an irritation on the bottom of his okay. his his feet. Um, uh, so this sore. So definitely the sand makes his feet sore. They seem to have been softer before, and he may be developing some calluses that he's not used to because he's pointing out his feet. Okay. Wow, this has been phenomenal, Vincent. This has been certainly beyond <laughs> beyond anything we could have asked for or expected. Before I let you go, where can people go to find out more, to find your work, and find out everything that you have to offer the world? Well, um, one of the first places and the foundational place is my website, which is vincentjenna.com, and that's with a G. They can find me everywhere else on all my social media pages. Uh, Facebook, I do a lot of Facebook Live events, so sh they should look for that. Plus, as you, I have, I'm a host of Unity Online Radio, and it's every Wednesday at noon Eastern time. Plus, of course, all of the, you know, the, the podcasts are on there that they can download. They can come to me and live and call in with any questions that they have every Wednesday. And there's all different things that I'm doing, and they really can find that all out on my website. I'm even a regular guest on a UK television show. It's called Scripting the Life You Want, and it's on Sky TV, the Feel Good Factor channel. And it's moving to prime time Monday nights at 8.30 UK time. And so they can see me there and be on the lookout for my new book. And so far, the title is God, It's Not Working. What one man found that makes everything work. So I've got so much. Thank you for asking and thank you for having me, Michael. This has been phenomenal, wonderful blast for me and an honor. It so goes both ways, Vincent. It so does. So on that note, yes. for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying be well, have fun. Check out everything that Vincent Jenna has to offer and connect with your spirit today and above and beyond all else, shine bright. Woohoo! That was one of the most special, profound. It was really two interviews. This is with Vincent Jenna, first off, the first part of the interview of learning what's blocking us from hearing, with, uh, from hearing spirit was phenomenal. And then diving into what he had to share was so prescient, was so spot on. I'm going to go back and listen to this over and over and over again. And my guess is you'll want to do the same as well. On that note, if you want to be able to channel, if you want guidance, if you want to hear from spirit, get on the automatic writing experience so that each and every morning you can bring, as he said, your highest level questions, your best questions. You can bring them to spirit when you write in the morning. To get all the automatic writing experience, you can get it at Amazon. I highly recommend getting it at your local bus bookseller. You can also get the entire video-based program with live classes by going to automaticwriting.com. To check out more amazing interviews, click here. Subscribe below. Be sure to click on that bell icon to be notified of upcoming shows, YouTube premieres, live events with me every Sunday night. Big thumbs up and share, share, share if you were touched by this interview. And above and beyond all else, shine bright. Woohoo! Love you guys. <laughs>